Hey, crazy kitty. Why are you so cute? You enjoying that nice sunny nap? Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. I haven't shot any videos in the last couple of days because I get these killer cold sores sometimes. And I'm not too terribly bothered by how they look. I mean, it's just real life. I get on here regularly with things like wet hair and no makeup and whatever. I'm I'm okay. Like I, It's not that I feel like I'm always feeling myself, but I have just resolved this is who I am. It's how I look. However, I smile really big when I talk. <laughs> it's just like something that I've always done. I just, I am very expressive and have a big mouth and smile really big. And so I have a hard time talking and shooting videos when I have cold sores because it hurts. So it's finally getting to the point now that I felt like I could shoot a video. It's really highly inconvenient because it'll be like, oh, you're taking off today. <laughs> no work for you for the next two days. I've gotten a ton done out in the garden uh, just working with headphones in and not talking much. I have to show you all this. So this week... I'm not 100% sure how much video I will make of it. I'm getting some stuff shot this weekend to be uploaded this week. But um, my little sister, I have a little sister. You guys have met her. I think she's been on one video in the past. Maybe, I think. I don't know. She's very private. She, like, she doesn't really do a lot with social media. Like She doesn't post on social media. Um, but she's seven years younger than me. And we're actually very close. But I just... I try to navigate this platform with honor to people and like respect of boundaries and stuff like that. It's why you don't always see my older kids because they don't always want to be on videos. And if they don't want to, I'm not going to make them. And as my younger children have gotten older, um, you've kind of seen them less and less. It used to be that they were underfoot all the time and they liked being on the camera. They liked being in the videos. But as they get older... Um, you know, if they express any measure of like, yeah, I don't really want to do that, we just drop it. So with my little sister coming, she's bringing her husband and baby. So they got married on Leap Day four years ago, 2020. And uh, they made kind of a commitment to each other that every four years on Leap Day, on their like real anniversary, that they were going to do a trip. Well, they just had a baby uh, this year. And, or, well, last year. She's almost a year old. But, she, um, obviously going on any sort of vacation with an under one-year-old infant, it's kind of difficult. And my sister reached out and said, hey, we were thinking we might take our trip out there. So, I'm super excited. I just opened this in the mail, which I bought for my little niece. It says, Auntie's Bestie. And it has a little a bottom pants. I cannot even handle it. Oh my gosh. So I am so silly excited. I seriously just can't even. Um, I can't wait for them to get here. Today I actually have a lot of things that I need to get done. But with, I, I was just texting my sister because I this outfit came in and I was texting her. And oh, hey, Benny boy. Do you think Ben's going to do soon? I don't know. You have to go ask daddy. It looks like he's about to walk in the front door. Huh? Daddy. <laughs> But yeah, um, I was texting Jewel and I was like, I'm so excited that I'm like, I've got to get myself motivated because I'm just laying here staring at the ceiling <laughs> because I'm so excited. All right, a little bit later, got my hair dry, got my motivation mustard. I am walking out to the greenhouse. I'm going to open it up because it's pretty sunny out here. And I was just looking at Maya. He's putting some hay out for the cows. We're actually getting ready to sell some of these heifers, um, the Devon heifers. We just want to cut our numbers down. We are going to build some movable paddocks in the pastures next door and some stuff like that, but just for the time being. We, are, we started having the new season of babies. We had a heifer born yesterday morning. I'm going to try to get out here and see if we can get a look at her. And I mean, when you get cows, they multiply. That's just kind of the nature of it. Any farm animals, you have some multiplication that happens and you have to figure out what you're gonna do with them. And so we're looking at cutting those numbers down a little bit. Oh, did y'all get a fresh hay bale? Are you so happy? All right, I don't have a zoom lens on this camera, but if you guys can see right there, 
is the new little baby girl with her mama. So nice. And here's little Christmas Carol. Hey, Carol. So she's half Devon and half Jersey. And I'm really loving the way that she's looking. She's a future, future milk cow for sure. Oh, hey, Bosco. What's up, handsome? What's up, handsome? So, Bosco, I reached my hand out and he smelled it and pulled back. I have essential oils in my hand that I was putting on my lip. <laughs> He's like, I don't like that. I don't either, Bosco. <laughs> Bear Hay Bell is next, which is why we have this whole posse hanging out here at the fence. I'm gonna stay close up here just to open the gate for Maya so he doesn't have to get out of the tractor. This morning I saw a little video clip of this barn when we had first moved into it and I was like, dang, that place is clean. <laughs> Now it looks like a barn. Oh, hey, little zucchini. Are you having a barn kitty nap? Yeah. Well, I was trying to get a better look at the baby, but it looks like the mommy took it around along the side. <laughs> I'll come through here and see if I can come around the back. I don't have anything for you. Go eat your hay. Spring is such an exciting time on the farm with all the babies being born and seedlings popping up. It's just wonderful. Hey there, roosters. This morning, I've just been appreciating the beauty of this farm. I always feel this whenever we start coming out of winter and it starts warming up and the days start getting longer and the farm comes back to life. And of course it just gets better and better every year, but this morning I have felt a great sense of appreciation for getting to live this way. It's really special. I was trying to help you. I was trying to help you. Huh? I know. Oh, you haven't showed our YouTube friends your recent acquisitions. <laughs> no, he brought home two horses. Back up. Hey, don't be testy. Stay in here, please. Back up. This is Royal. And then right behind her is Josie. Gabriel, come on. Every time he brings a new hay bale out, he moves the ring over some and essentially these piles of left behind hay and all the manure that accumulates around them is ultimately building soil out here. But one of our most immediate moves is gonna to be to just massively alleviate this pasture by getting animals off of it. It's fine for now. This has been a very intensive grazing, but it's not our end goal. Watching Jeremiah do this is fun. Oh, look, here comes the little baby calf. I don't know if she's going to show up, but she's like, Mom, Mom, you left me behind. <laughs> Are you talking to me, you little cutie? Hey girls, there's Hope and Honey. Hey honey girl, hey pretty lady. Hey pretty lady, you gonna lick me? Oh, you're a sweet girl. Honey is quite pregnant. I don't know exactly when she's due. She's not bagged out real bad yet, but 
and hope, man, I really hope she's pregnant. One of the things I worked on the last couple of days was like I filled up a lot of my containers like this bed had gotten really low just from compaction and rain and stuff so I topped it off and I also dug up and then replanted a bunch of these little hen and chicks so I put some bulbs in on both sides for like dahlias and some gladiolas so this bed will be really full but it'll kind of have this little middle part that's just the hen and chicks and I topped off a lot of my containers that were out here and planted some odds and ends things. I was hoping that this did well. I dug up a bunch of volunteer chamomile that had started growing down like in the walkways and stuff and put it in here. And I think more will start coming. I pulled the mulch off. I think more will come up that reseeded in here, but I wanted to get a little head start with these volunteers. Some of them seem to have taken better than the others, but some of them I was able to get more roots out than others. I've been showing you guys the progress of the path over the last few days. My friend Michael and Jim, they came out here and have been working on this. They actually came out here early this morning and finished the last part on back, so it looks good. I think it's going to look amazing whenever all the stuff starts growing back in. All right, I'm going to open this up because it's probably like 8 jillion degrees in here. My plants are like, why do you hate me? Oh, it looks like everything had enough water to be fine with a hot morning. So I have offered space in my greenhouse to a couple of local friends, which is great. But I will get so nervous about stuff. And when it's my stuff, I'm really laid back. Like, I'm like, whatever, it'll be fine. When it's other people's stuff, I'm like, oh gosh, Jess, don't mess this up. So I've been like... <laughs> probably a little more vigilant than usual in making sure everything's closed up, making sure everything's vented, making sure everything's watered. Um, and it's funny, I'll probably end up having less loss of plants this year because of that vigilance, because I'm allowing other people to start seeds in my greenhouse. That's all I have to do. Make it somebody else's stuff and I'll take better care of it, I guess. So I actually wanted to ask you guys for some advice. We are getting ready to break ground on our house very soon. Uh, I think that we close on our construction loan like the first or second week in March. So it's getting really, really close. And I actually have a meeting on Monday with our contractor friend and our friend that's been doing the draft work. And we are finalizing just like the plan for the house. And there is one thing I have to decide. Like I have to decide it by tomorrow night, before the meeting on Monday morning. And I wanted to put it on here and get your opinions. It's so hot in here, <laughs> I'm like starting to sweat. But this will be brief and then I'll go back outside where it's windy and I'll turn the vents on in here. Um, we're wanting to do wood stoves. So we have like a living room and there's gonna be a wood stove in there. And then I have another little hearth room off of my kitchen and that's just gonna have an open fireplace. And we have like our scullery kitchen, which is, I'm going to put like a wood cook stove in there. And I've done so much research that I've made my own self feel very confused. And I have a tendency to do this to myself whenever I am trying to make a decision that I want to make the right decision. I want to keep budget in mind, but not necessarily just the initial purchase budget. Like I want to make a good purchase that I'm not going to have to replace or repair a bunch down the road so it's kind of balancing out like the balance between okay some of there's a big price discrepancy in a lot of the different wood stoves like I've seen some that cost four times as much as others but they're way more known brands but I'm kind of wondering like is the function that much better is it worth it to spend more on the front end anyway I have to pick my wood stove for the living room and my wood cook stove in the next like 36 hours so if you are using any of that stuff, will you please tell me like what your thoughts, if you've done any research, like 
I'm really looking for people who have actively used something. Uh, so I'll tell you like right now with the cook stove, the reason I want this and it, we're doing like our main kitchen and then off of that we have what we're calling like the scullery kitchen, which is kind of like pantry workspace processing area. Um, because we do so much with food and we do a lot of entertaining and in the future we're wanting to do like classes and stuff out here. So I want to have ample space to be able to manage that well. And of course doing content and stuff like that. I'm keeping all of this in mind. But with the wood cook stove, it's kind of this balance. Like we live in South Carolina. It's very warm here a lot of the year. And so we've put this part of the kitchen. It's kind of like off the back of the house. So it's sort of separate. It's not separated, but it's off the back of the house separate from the rest of the house. So that if there ever was like an emergency that we really needed to cook on wood heat, but it was hot outside, we could do that without it is directly affecting the heat of the house. Um, and then the idea being that in the winter, we can use it a lot. Um, and that whatever heat it does create is going to help heat our home. So one of the issues I'm having, I'm just gonna like verbally process this and hope that maybe somebody out here can like chime in with some wisdom and experience. But for my family, I'm used to going with like the biggest model because we have a really big family. And of course we do entertain a lot and host a lot and teach a lot. And so I can typically use like a really big stove, for instance. The thing is with balancing with the heat, I don't necessarily know that the biggest stove would be the best option for us because in order to heat a really big stove, I assume you have to have a fire that's producing more heat and I don't know that we really need that. So I'll tell you like one of the ones that I'm looking at right now is the Lenordica Millie. Um, it's really pretty, but it I've watched a lot of videos. It seems to be very well made, but it only has like two burners on top, which if this is just kind of like a, a secondary use stove, we'll have like a regular stove in our main kitchen. If this is like a secondary use stove, it's like, okay, well, that would probably serve. And even if there ever was like an emergency that I really needed to use it, we could probably get by okay with that. Um, and it might be more practical for all the rest of the time. And then of course, I've also been looking at like the Pioneer Princess. That's one that there's a lot of content out on YouTube about it. And it's a lot larger. They're about the same price point, but again, it's a lot larger. And so a lot of people use those to heat like whole houses. So I'm kind of like on the fence. As far as the living room wood stove, that's not, I'm not looking for a cook stove. I'm just looking for a heater stove. I asked on my Facebook group, I got some really good feedback about using so soapstone stoves. So I was looking at those. And again, it's balancing, even in the winter, a lot of times in South Carolina, we could really benefit from like burning wood and heating the house in the evenings and in the mornings and of course through the night. But like in the middle of the afternoon, a lot of times it warms up enough that you really wouldn't want to have that stove going in the middle of the day. I, I'm, I'm balancing out all the options. I'd love any input that you have. I'm going to be watching these comments and I appreciate any experience. If there's any videos that help to you decide stuff like this, um, any wisdom that you can share with me, I would be really glad. I'm going to decide by the end of the weekend for the Monday morning meeting because we have to figure out like some framing specs essentially. Like I have to choose what we're gonna do so we can have the specs of that product. I don't have to order it on Monday, but I do have to know what I'm gonna order. So yeah, that's where I'm at. All right, I am going to turn my fans on in this greenhouse to vent it out because it is over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 38 Celsius in here right now even though outside of here, it is cool enough to be in this sweatshirt comfortably. So, there we go. Come down here real quick and pop in the greenhouses. I'm actually hoping the wind will settle down. I was hoping today to shoot a video kind of lining out our garden plan for the year because we're mixing things up a little bit with building the house. I wanna catch you guys up to that. Oh, look at the heron. I don't know if you'll be able to see him. He just flew over the pond. Hmm, so nice. Smells so good. Getting to build our own house and like our dream house is so awesome. And it is very fulfilling for me as a person who like researches and reads reviews and somewhat agonizes over decisions. It's really awesome because I mean, 
it's like getting to stretch those muscles and like really make solid decisions and it's I'm enjoying it a lot but it is taking a ton of like brain capacity we, Jeremiah and I kind of made a deal he told me because he's doing a lot of the work himself and I'll help where I can which will probably be more like staining and painting and you know different things like that I'm good at but he has the carpentry skills and he told me that he's like cool doing all this work but the contribution that he needs for me is he needs me to make the decisions so all the design stuff and things like what stove we're going to use, what bathtubs we're going to use, all those things, it's coming down to my research. I am completely like neck deep in it right now, just every day, spending so much time like reading about all the different options. And if you guys don't mind, I know a lot of you are in the industry of home building, you've built your own homes, you've done a lot of the research, you are doing homesteading or looking forward to doing homesteading, and I know you're out there. I know you like very conscientious consumers are there and you've done all of the thought and so if you don't mind me pulling on you and getting your input it really will help me a lot during this time because sometimes what I need I'll think I know what I want but I just like need the reassurance of other people being like yeah that actually worked well for me so on the weekends a lot of times even though obviously I'll come out here every day and notice tasks that need to be done or like piddle around. And I come out very intentionally to kind of survey what I have that's harvestable because usually on Saturdays or Sundays, I'm kind of making something of a meal plan for the week. So I like to have fresh in my mind what I think is gonna be ready to go into our meals. This tunnel is not providing a whole lot right now. Um, kale, there's a little bit of kale. There are a couple root vegetables that are getting pretty close to being used, and this spinach is looking really good. I think this is about ready to start being harvested. The other tunnel, though, has been pretty steadily providing food, though now as spaces open up, they're getting filled in with uh, flower bulbs and stuff because this is gonna be the flower tunnel. This is maybe the thing I'm most excited about in the garden this year is just this space filled with beautiful flowers and fragrance. I'm very pumped for that. Well guys, I'm gonna head back in the house, move on to my next task. Gotta get some cooking done. Thank you for hanging out with me today and all the days you do. I bless you. Until next time.